Happy Tuesday, folks. It's so great to be with you. I offer, I'm going to be offering the Mass here in a couple minutes. I wanted to think about a few things, some funny things, though. Um, first of all, I feel good. I don't feel too tired, although a couple of you have reached out, more than a couple, and say, Father, are you okay? I said, yeah, I feel, I feel fine. Just a little gray, but that's my natural uh, skin color, and uh, I don't want you to be too jealous. Secondly, is to recognize, thanks for all of you that forgot to comment that I was supposed to wear a rose vestment on Sunday. Uh, it's optional, purple or rose, but nobody reached out to me on Sunday or even on Monday, yesterday, to say, hey, where's the rose vestment? So you're kind of busted. Third, and that's only because I realized that I had forgotten to do it uh, when I saw another priest um, mass uh, video. So uh, anyway, I'm busted. Last is just to kind of have you prepare your hearts. I'm begging you, get in the routine. One of the things I keep coming back at you over and over is what's your routine? Um, you need a rhythm because that rhythm is important. And that rhythm's got to be spiritual, physical, and psychological. First of all, spiritual, get up. Use the time that you would drive to work for prayer. Find that quiet place in your house um, and pray. Some of you asked how to set the altar. Very simple. Any place that's a sacred place that you could turn, put a nice cloth, a couple of images, maybe pictures of your family. Put those all together. Then uh, physical, you got to get some exercise, folks. You got to clear your mind. You got to go outside. Don't just stay inside all the time because it's going to make the days get really super long. And then psychological is I think you got to reach out to people and see how they're doing. Check, reach out to those people that the Lord puts in your heart. May the Lord give you peace as I offer the Mass to you, uh, for you today and also the intention to the Mass. Whatever eyes see this Holy Mass, those eyes are intentionally offered during this Holy Mass. God bless you folks. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Let's celebrate the Mass now. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Today, folks, I'm going to offer this Mass for Diamantino Dominguez, uh, Tay Tran, and Frank Lopez. Well, happy Tuesday. Uh, I'll probably have to say that all the time to remind myself what day of the week it is. And really to encourage you to be in that routine. Get up at a good time to pray, to get in a routine that allows you time to really pray throughout the day. One of the things I want to offer you to pray about is the Angelus. You know, you can Google it online and try to pray it when you can. It used to be prayed three times a day, 6 a.m., noon, and 6. But it's really beautiful to um, get in a, that routine and to also come with us on the Mass to be with us at the Mass, to, to offer your sufferings, your pains, your worries. So let us call to mind our sins. Ask the Lord for His forgiveness and His mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May the venerable exercises of holy devotion shape the hearts of your faithful, O Lord, to welcome wordily the Paschal mystery and proclaim the praises of your salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The angel brought me, Ezekiel, back to the entrance of the temple of the Lord, and I saw water flowing from beneath the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the side of the temple was toward the east. The water flowed down from the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He led me outside by the north gate and around to the outer gate facing the east, 
which I, where I saw water trickling from the right side. Then when he had, had, when he, he had walked off to the east with a measuring cord in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits, and then he waded through the water, which was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand, and once more had me wade through the water, which was knee deep. Again, he measured off a thousand and had me wade. The water is up to my waist. Once more, he measured off a thousand, but there was now a river through which I could not wade. For, there were wa- for the water had risen so high, it had become a river that could not be crossed except by swimming. He asked me, Have you seen this son of man? Then he brought me to the bank of the river where he had me sit. Along the bank of the river I saw very many trees on both sides. He said to me, This water flows into the eastern district down upon the Arabah and empties into the sea, the salt waters which which it makes fresh. Wherever the river flows, every sort of living creature that can multiply shall live, and there shall be abundant fish. For wherever this water comes, the sea shall be made fresh. Along both banks of the river, fruit trees of every kind shall grow. Their leaves shall not fade, nor their fruit fail. Every month they shall bear fresh fruit, for they shall be watered by the flow from the sanctuary. Their fruit shall serve for food, their leaves for medicine. The word of the Lord. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. God is is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in distress. Therefore, we fear not, though the earth be shaken and mountains plunge into the depths of the sea. Response. There is a stream whose runlets gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is in its midst. It shall not be disturbed. God will help it at the break of dawn. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Come, behold the deeds of the Lord, the outstanding things he has wrought on earth. May the words of the Lord be on my heart, on my lips, that I worthily and joyfully proclaim this holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem at the Sheep Gate a pool called in Hebrew Bethesda, with five porticos. In these lay a large number of ill, blind, lame, and crippled. One man was there, had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been ill for a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While on my way, someone else gets down there before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your mat. Immediately the man became well, took up his mat and walked. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who was cured, it's, It is the Sabbath, and it is not lawful you, for you to carry your mat. He answered them, The man who made me well told me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who told you, Take it up and walk? The man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had slipped away, since there was a crowd there. After this, Jesus found him in the temple area and said to him, Look, you are well. Do not sin any more so that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went and told the Jews that Jesus was the one who had made him well. Therefore the Jews began to persecute Jesus because he did this on a Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. I couldn't help but look at the scripture reading so they didn't think of this great time of water flowing from the temple area, from the church. And it flows down to all sides and it helps all of those that are suffering. This water that flows into all reach, all areas of people's lives. Some of the areas, though, need to be renewed and refreshed. 
You know, it seems strange, folks, but confession during this time is really important. I'm offering confessions. It's on my website. And the reason why I emphasize that is because during all of this sickness, the temples, our homes, they haven't gotten any bigger. They're the same size. And people are texting me and telling me, my gosh, Father, it's so hard for us. We're learning to really love each other. And so I want to emphasize one thing today. It's going to take real prayer and real sacrifice to put up with the things that some of us are going through, some of the things you're going through, to not become impatient, to not isolate. Because what the evil evil one really wants to do is to have you stay in your rooms, to not communicate, to become so frustrated, and to begin to think, will this ever end? Look, There's water flowing now. It's flowing into hearts that are open. It's converting that salty area into new life. And all those areas in our lives that were once barren or somewhat broken, the scripture says so clear that these are the areas where there's going to be new, these rivers are going to flow and the fruit trees of every kind are going to blossom. Every virtue is going to come alive. And the scripture today also speaks to, about, to us about the man with the mat and how Jesus comes to this man and, and puts him in the beautiful water, that cleansing water. That's the gift of the baptism that each of us have received. And so I want you today to recognize that you have to pray for that grace to really be sacrificial, to not begin to think that We know we're entitled to space. I'm entitled to this or that. It's all a gift, folks. And if we can keep coming back to the Lord and saying, it's the man, Jesus, that water is flowing from, from his heart. If we can remain open to that, then the little struggles and the sacrifices that God is asking you to make, you can make them joyfully and and freely. Remember, folks, Without um, God's grace, we can't do this. And think of so many poor, so many who are suffering that, that cannot go out. They, have, they don't have an extra freezer. They're just trying to survive and they don't know what's going on. May the Lord give you clarity and peace. We will get through this because the waters from the temple are flowing. So we now offer some petitions, folks, for the church and all who serve in the church. Oh, Lord, help us to be witnesses of your grace and mercy, we pray to the Lord. For all of our elected officials to be guided by the power of the Holy Spirit in their decision-making, we pray to the Lord. Lord, that we will consume or be open to the living waters that are flowing down from the sides of the temple to reach all of humanity to give them a spirit of hope, a spirit of love, a spirit of peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you to pour your grace upon all those who have died and upon those who are sick, that, Lord, your magnificent presence, your living water of love will relieve the sick, grant eternal rest to those who have died, we pray to the Lord. Good and gracious Father, hear our prayers and those in our hearts. We ask them through your son, Jesus, through Mary's intercession as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth is given. Human hands are made to become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbles himself, share in our own humanity. Put your heart in the water and the chalice, folks, represented by the water. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness. We have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. Become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you. Wash me of my iniquities, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer to you, O Lord, these gifts which you yourself have bestowed. May they attest to your care as creator for this our mortal life and effect in us the healing that brings us immortality through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, through your bodily fasting, you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its reward through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim, they worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep on the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed Apostle St. Andrew, St. Teresa of Calcutta, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord, folks, be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe to eternal life. Let us pray. Purify our minds, O Lord, we pray, and renew them with this heavenly sacrament, that we may find help for our bodies now and likewise in times to come. Through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Folks, have a beautiful Tuesday. Uh, Tomorrow night on Wednesday, Father Mari and I will start a kind of a three-night talk on English. I'll do the English side. Father Mario will do the Spanish side on Our Lady. And we don't have an exact title yet, but we have some time to prep. To prep. And one of the things we want to do is we'll post it on the Anima Christi Retreat website and, and the Holy Ruckus and try to just learning to say yes like Mary. Yes like Mary. Anyway, more to come. Just keep your eye out. God bless you. Have a beautiful day.